Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter six, number 73. And here we were given some data for the height of Asian adult males. So that was our numerical variable, right? Height of Asian adult males. Oops, let me scooch that back down. Of Asian adult males. This is a continuous numerical variable, and so every numerical variable's got units. We were told this was inches. They told me that the average height was 66 inches. Oops, let me do the check mark. That we deviated from that average by an average of 2.5, so that was my standard deviation. And they also told me I had a normal distribution. So with those three pieces of information, I get my squiggles. And that actually turns out to be the answer for part A, right? What is the distribution? Well, that is the distribution, right? So quite literally, this symbol means distributed, right? So our variable heights are distributed normally, which means I can make a bell curve like I have over here. And you can see me labeling my x-axis with the variable. There's height. I've labeled my x. Now probabilities along the y, which is great. You can also see that 66 is right below the peak, which it should be if I were to draw a little dot there, right? 66 is always below the peak. I'm going to erase that because I don't necessarily need that there. But in terms of part A, there is my distribution. For part B, they say find a probability that a person's between 65 and 66 inches. So I've got my capital P and I've got my little statement in here. And there might be a question of, hey, do, do I need to put the less than or equal to or can I just put less than? It doesn't actually matter because the probability that x is equal to a number, so these bottom parts here, that adds zero area under a curve, which means it doesn't change our probability. But whenever you have a problem like this, what I always want you to do is, again, look inside the parentheses and start with your artificial x-axis. So we want x values between 65 and 69. So that's why you see me highlighting those numbers on the x-axis, and then you see me shading that area under a curve because one of the key ideas coming out of chapter six is when you have a continuous numerical variable, which you have here, right? Probability is always equivalent to area under the curve. So if I want the probability that an Asian male is between 65 and 69 inches tall, I've got to calculate that number. And just looking at that before I even get going, that looks like a pretty pretty good chunk. If this entire thing has to be 100%, the part that I've shaded, it looks like it's about half to me. So I expect to get a number between 50% or around 50%, maybe a little bit more if I'm looking at it. But whenever you have a normal curve and you want to calculate a probability, you're going to use normal CDF. And the mechanics are always the same, low, high, mean, and standard deviation. Now, these first two numbers come from your, again, your artificial x-axis. So you see my low at 65 and my high here at 69. And then the mean and standard deviation are always given to you. So we were given 66 and we were given 2.5. So that's where you see me plugging that into my calculator. 0.54 comes back out, which seems reasonable, right? This number matches my graph here, so I'm happy with that. Right? So again, a, a different example would be if I got a number of something like 0.25 here, that would be a little red flag that maybe I did something wrong because this area does not look like 25%. All right, so with that, we've got A and B down. Let's figure out what C is asking. So C is saying, would you expect to meet many Asian males over 72 inches tall? Well, let's go figure that out. So if I want to meet, or if I want to talk about the probability of meeting a an Asian male over, oops, let me write this, over 72 inches tall, that implies x has to be greater than 72. Well, I can still make my bell curve, right? So if we take a look, right, I still have height down here on the x-axis. I've labeled x, I've labeled y, right? Or y is always my probability. You also, again, see 66 under the peak, right? Because that's what this little symbol means. When I say x is normally distributed with a a mean of 66 and a standard deviation of 2.5, that, that's what that's telling me. If you wanted to make the little tick marks here all the way up and all the way down by subtracting and adding 2.5, meaning I could have written 68.5 here, I could have written 71, and then you see I'm getting closer to 72, you can always scale your x-axis if you want to. I just don't necessarily need to at this point if I'm just calculating these areas. 
All right, so from here, let's go find our x-axis. So I'm gonna start inside the parentheses. I want x greater than 72. So 72, whoa, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> 72 is pretty far over here. And because this greater than is happening, I really wanna to shade to the right. And you can see there's barely any area, right? I barely shaded, let me actually write barely shaded any area. And that means that the number I crunch should be pretty darn small because I can't see anything that's happening here. So if I, if I start to piece this together, all right, so I have my x-axis. I'm going from 72 to positive infinity because it's greater than. So I want to go 72 on up, and there's an infinity on up. And in terms of the mean and the standard deviation, those are always given to you, right? So I was given 66, and I was given 2.5. And when I crunch that, I get 0.008. And that is rare. So would I expect to meet an Asian male that was over 72 inches tall? The answer is no. No, I wouldn't. So in stats, anything less than 5% is considered rare. And for here, this is, I mean, this is less than 1%. So it's definitely rare to us. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.